Scripture says you can't put new wine into old wine skin. And that is what I was trying to do with self-righteousness. Trying to take more of God to add to who I was. Thinking that that would make me become better. That would make me feel better. That would make me become acceptable. But God said no. In today's video, I want to talk about my personal journey of faith. How the cross of Christ changed everything. Number one. The cross of Christ is my turning point. I have to surrender my self-righteousness to accept the cross of Christ and the finished work of Jesus for my total liberation. In order to bring context to this, I will get to talk about my personal experience and conviction about the cross of Christ and what Jesus did at the cross at Galvary. Growing up from a religious background, I did not really know what changed the cross of Christ brought to my life and my faith as a Christian. When it gets to the period where we celebrate the death and his resurrection, it is just like this thing happened some 2000 years ago and Christ died for me. But I did not really have a conviction. Did he really die for me? Because I did not see myself as that bad sinner, such a great sinner compared to the prostitutes, the robbers, the criminals, just some people that do some overt sins, what we might term the overt sin. So I thought that I could make it up to God if I wronged him. Telling me that Christ died for me, there was no conviction. I just thought to myself, I'm just a bad person that needs more of God or more of Christ to become good because I did not know the extent to which I was bankrupt. I don't know how great my sin was. So living life as someone that has come to accept Christ, I was just like, when I fell, I would tell God, I will never do this again. I will never wrong you again. I will make it up to you. So I thought it was about my self-effort. I thought it was about this legalistic teaching that was given to me. I was fed with this. So I thought doing more, coming to church more often, getting engaged in units in church and serving would bring me some kind of solace for my soul. But coming to the knowledge of the scriptures, I realized that I was not just bad, I was dead. This was not a situation of a bad person becoming good. This was a situation of dead to life because it was a no way out situation. I was dead. And the fact that my sin was not expressed in an overt manner whereby everybody can see did not make me a lesser sinner than the one that everybody could see their sins. Because all of us together needed our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is where I say the cross of Christ is the turning point for me. Because there are so many Christians still today who are still in church, they serve in church, they even have positions in church who don't believe they are saved. They don't have an assurance for their salvation. They are still hoping, oh, by God's mercy, maybe we will go to heaven. And this is a sad thing. So in scriptures in Ephesians chapter 2, it said, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. And Romans chapter 5 verse 12 said, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. For everyone sinned. It brings this realization that the aspect of sin is not just about your acts. The aspect of sin is ingrained in your DNA as a human being. Because the sin of our forefather, Adam, has led us to this place. And in today, you can see that sin entering the world brought corruption to creation. Such that we see the nuances in our society about gender and all these pollutions that are against nature. And why is this going on? Why is this spreading? Because sin is this cancer that brought all of this. Sin is this virus that has corrupted the very essence of human life. And what is the solution for all of this? Christ is the solution. The cross of Christ is the solution. And this is the turning point that I realized for myself. Scripture says you can't put new wine into old wine skin. And that is what I was trying to do with self-righteousness. Trying to take more of God to add to who I was. Thinking that that would make me become better. That would make me feel better. That would make me become acceptable. But God said no. You need to put new wine in new wine skin. Which is there needs to be a transformation of your person. And that could only happen through the cross of Christ. And today it seems to me that many Christians do not even know what changed when Christ died at the cross. Because we are living as if nothing changed. As if 
The death of Christ on the cross was just another rude or cruel act of wicked men against the righteous Son of God, such that when we come to him, we now come as if we are pitying him. Oh, such a good man. He had to die. Sinners killed him. There was a problem there. When you approach the cross of Christ with pity. So here the cross of Christ dealt with the root of sin. Which is the self-righteousness and the self-dependence and the idea of man thinking, I can do this on my own. I can live this life on my own. Because that is what happened at the beginning when man was disconnected from God through disobedience. And for man to be able to live life, man has to go back to the blueprint, which is getting reconnected with God. And the cross closed the rift, whereby we were separated from God. It is the cross that closed the rift. When Jesus said it is finished, the power of God unto salvation was released for every human being. And I am a benefactor of that. You too can be a benefactor if you have not come to this expression of your faith to know that the cross of Christ handled everything. Apostle Paul said in Corinthians, to preach the message of the cross seems like sheer nonsense to those who are on their way to destruction. But to us who are being saved, it is the mighty power of God released within us. Again he said, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So this is where I say that the cross of Christ is my turning point. That is where my salvation got anchored. This is where I got to a place of assurance in God that heaven is an assurance for me. And it's because of the cross of Christ that I know that I am loved because he loves me that much. When I see the sorrow, when I see what he went through, I realize how much he loves me. Number two, the cross of Christ is my reference point. So my point of reference for my salvation cannot be in my works or the works of the law. It cannot be in my actions or my inactions. It cannot be on what I can do, but it is on the cross of Christ. The point of reference for my healing, for my deliverance, for my safety, for my protection, for everything that I can get in this life, in this world, and in the life to come, my point of reference is the cross of Christ. That is where everything changed. My being blessed is all linked to the cross of Christ and all that Jesus had done at the cross of Galvary and all he has achieved for me because he did it all for me. He resurrected for me and it is because of his resurrection that I am being declared righteous. This is my justification of faith. This is where I get the receipts. It is the cross of Christ. That's my point of reference. So in and of myself, I am unclean. And nothing clean can be taken from an unclean. So it took Christ, the righteous and spotless Lamb of God, the Son of Heaven, the Beloved of God, whose blood is spotless to redeem me from my sin, from my uncleanliness. Job said in Job 14, Who can bring purity out of an impure person? No one. So that is why when it comes to my holiness, when it comes to my sanctification, when it comes to me living a life worthy of God, I cannot have a point of reference in any other place except the cross of Christ. The song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So it is not about anything that I can do or anything that I have done. It is all about all that he has done for me, my point of reference is the cross of Christ. When I speak about my healing or when I have the symptoms of sickness and illness or any ailment, my point of reference for my healing is the cross of Christ. Because it is through his wounds that I am healed. Scripture says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. So my point of reference for my healing, for being whole, cannot be based on how much more can I serve God so that he can heal me. It cannot be based on how favorites am I to do the kingdom work so that God will heal me. When it comes to my provision and my belief in faith that God will provide all my needs, I know that he became poor at the cross so that I will, out of his poverty, 
be rich. The scripture says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. And this is not about spiritual riches. This is about physical riches. So God wants you to be rich. And all of these, your provision in life, your faith to believe this, the point of reference, should be the cross of Christ. And that is my point of reference. That for me to be successful and achieve in this life, my point of reference is Christ. My point of reference is the cross of Christ. Scripture says in James chapter 1 verse 17, Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of light, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. To receive all the good gifts that God has for me in life, my point of reference is the cross of Christ Jesus. Number three, Christ died as me. I love to say that Christ did not just die for me, but he died as me. I reckon myself in him when I see him on, on the cross that he died as me. That was me on that cross. That was my sin on that cross. That was my failures, my mistakes. That was me on that cross. Me in my bankruptcy. He replaced me and died in my place as me. That was my death. This is his life. The life I live today, I ought to live as him. I don't just live by my own precepts, by my own design, by my own wishes. But I ought to live in his will, by his precepts, by his design, in his will. Because this is his life. The divine exchange that happened at the cross has to bring me to a place of conviction to know that the life I live is the life of Christ. I ought to live as Christ. I ought to live in consonant with what Christ loves, with what he wants, with what is honorable to him. The same way he intentionally gave himself up for me. I ought to be intentional about giving myself to live for him. Paul said of this in Galatians 2, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body, trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And in 2 Corinthians, the scripture goes on to say, Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. That is the heart and the conviction every believer in Christ should have. That is the heart and the conviction every Christian should have. That is my conviction. That is my belief. I should live representing Christ in today's world. And this is so beautiful if we think about it this way, that Christ died for all such that everyone that walks out saying, I believe in Christ, should represent Christ wherever they find themselves. Which is, we don't call it a clone. We have Christ everywhere in human form. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in your brother and your sister. Christ in your neighbor, the hope of glory. So when we light up the world like that, that is where we can see the light spread. That is where we can see this corruption with all these nuances in our society about these ideas that are against God die down. That is where we can see them dissipated. When Christ fills every space. And this is the heart of this video. That you should come to embrace the cross of Christ. And see it change everything. Because the cross of Christ changes everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video is beneficial and a blessing to you. I would like to see you in my next video. I am Uwe and this is my YouTube channel. Do well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. If you love it, see you in my next YouTube video. God bless you. Stay safe. Bye.